What up guys, welcome to Sonja playing some more WWE 2K16 Universe Mode. We're on episode 214, week 75 of Pure Intense Wrestling. If you've missed Pure Intense Wrestling, Crash the Pamper Wrestling, or Divas last week, or Friday Night Generations, please go back and check every all those episodes out. It was crazy. Every, ma every match had a meaning to it, and I mean more meaning than the last, because these guys know that they're getting closer and closer to the end of the year, and as we get ourselves closer and closer to the end of this month here, I mean, the game's coming out at what, in a, what, five weeks from now? It's shit's getting, we're getting closer and closer, and like I said before, I'm not leaving 2K16 until I'm done with it. I'm not leaving until we get to the final month and that, back to that last match. I don't know how I'm going to do it. But it will be done. It will damn near be done. And I will tell you this. Shit's been getting out of control as of late. People know that we're getting closer to the end. And they've been bringing it. People want to become champions before the end of this thing. People want to do things before the end of this whole um, universe mode here. And the matches you saw last week, if you like I said, if you missed it, please go back and check it out. The matches last week were amazing and told why. These guys and girls want to get things done. But we're here at Pure Intense Wrestling. It's going to get even more crazy. Um, this is the last Pure Intense Wrestling before the end of the month here. Crash Pimper Wrestling later on this week will be having the Cell Games, um, <laughs> which will be just uh, Hell in a Cell matches for championships or just for matches that have importance or get you a number of contender shots and things all, all those things of that sort. I can't wait to see that, but that's later on this week. Also, the starting of next um, month, the next weekend of the next month, uh, Devils will be having their pay-per-view simply known as Flash Magic. I can't wait for that either. Things are getting crazy. And things, and like I said, you guys have seen those stuff I put out. It's insane. But anyways, let me stop talking about how great the stuff in the past was. Let's talk about the now. What's going on right now here in Pure Intense Wrestling? Up first, for the Pure Intense Wrestling Hardcore Championship, Dread makes his debut here to Pure Intense Wrestling as he takes on Azrael. Dread, no slouch in that ring don't let his size fool you the guy's huge but he can move so damn quickly at the same time has strength like a goddamn monster this guy gets things going he can take a lot of damage and a lot of punishment if someone needs to realize how much punishment this guy right here can take Azrael needs to realize that because Azrael could easily lose his pure intense wrestling hardcore championship these guys know each other just a little bit but not too much I can't wait to see what these guys can do in our first match our second match, PJ Vice takes on Escalator Torpe. Escalator Torpe, probably one of the best, easily one of the best and well-known um, lucha libre uh, wrestlers of this gen of, of the previous gen of the previous generation. He is damn good in that ring, and you guys have seen what he's done in that ring. Damn near being close to winning that um, High Fly Flow tournament was Escalito. At the same time, he takes on someone like PJ Vice who wants to get better and wants to also be that number one contender for the Pure Intense Wrestling World Championship. The question is, can he get a win here tonight over Escalito? Or the experience overtake PJ Vice here? Our third match of the night, Azul King Jr. takes on John Lucas Jr. These two know what it's like to be in that ring. These two know what it's like to be good in that ring. And these two are good in that ring. And I can't wait to see what these two can do. You have the technical ability of John Lucas Jr. and the high fly high flying uh, Lucha Libre styling of Azul King Jr. I can't wait to see what happens when these two clash together. It's going to be amazing. Our fourth match, Big Mike. Big Michael Collins takes on Justin Icon. Justin Icon with an amazing uh, victory over Chris Cross last week. I mean, they tore the house down in that match. It was damn good. But he takes on Mike Collins here, who's not as quick as a um, as a Chris Cross. So he has to worry about the power game that Mike Collins brings. But take nothing away from Justin Icon either. He's a big bastard himself, and these two behemoths are going to get it going in our fourth match. Our fifth match is for the Cruiserweight Championship of the World as Travis Leone takes on Chuck White. Chuck White with an amazing victory last week and a very, um, I wouldn't say decisive necessarily, but a shocking and probably one of the most shocking victories over a champion that we've ever had here in Pure Intense Wrestling. And that says a lot because Chuck White is, is damn good. He's damn good. He took on um, Trevor Locke last week and it was fucking insane these guys those guys tried to outdo each other so much but out of nowhere chuck white with an amazing uh roll up for victory there and if you've like i said if you missed pure intense wrestling last week please go back and check it out it was our main event it was insane those guys flew all around the ring but when it came down to it chuck white came out the victor regardless of such he takes on his tag team partner um former uh pure intense wrestling tag team um champions 
here. This is what I'm talking. This is the kind of work we're talking about. Like, this is how well these guys know each other here. They're working. It. They work together, and now they're gonna work together again. But right now, it's for that cruiserweight championship of the world. He takes on his tag team partner Travis Leone, and this is not gonna be an easy night for either of these two. Like I said, these guys know each other so damn well. I can't wait to see what these guys can do. Our sem our semi main event. Ethan Baker takes on Uha. Uha has been killing it so far as that pure intense wrestling intercontinental champion. But it was Ethan Baker wants to be the guy to take that belt that belt off of him. The thing is, can he do it? Can Ethan Baker do it? We'll find out later on tonight as he takes on Uha for the pure intense wrestling intercontinental championship. And then our main event is for the pure intense wrestling world championship as AO Spiral, Scott Mercury, and Ashley ever take each other on in the triple threat match to end pure intense wrestling here for this month. This shit has been getting out of control. I love all three of these guys. I'd love to see any of them as world champion. But right now, Scott Mercury is holding that championship and he wants to hold it as long as he possibly can. But he takes on a big time uh, content. He takes on two big time contenders like an AO Spirals and Ashley ever who are both former pure intense wrestlers world champions which one of these three gonna come out above we'll find out later on tonight but up first dread takes on as real for the pure intense wrestling hardcore championship let's get this pure intense wrestling on the road right now yeah. this is for the pure intense wrestling hardcore championship and these guys are gonna get it here oh Elbow already starting off. Azrael knows that this big behemoth is a hard guy to keep down for two for for long. He needs to figure out how to get Dread on the ground and keep him grounded for a three, or find a way to make him submit. Whatever the case may be, this is a hardcore match, and it can end anywhere. It can end up at the top of the ramp, it can end outside, inside the ring, through a table, in the crowd, wherever you, they want these this match these <laughs> wherever they want this match to end is where they have this match will end. Right now, Dread taking control. This exactly where Azrael doesn't want to be. Kicks away right at the chest of Azra of, of Dread there. Dread being, like I said, being a new man, a, a new member of Pure Intense Wrestling, and it's a oh, there's a reason why the guy like this gets signed. There's a reason why a guy like this gets signed. He's so damn good, so damn big, and so damn devastating already. There with a fucking choke backbreaker there. Nice arm drag reversal there by Azrael. Oh, forearm shot to the face. Kick the mid section there to keep him down. Keeping him down. Trying to have him stay down. But Azrael so damn quick. I mean, so as Dread so damn quick. It's not something you think he would say here. Belly to belly suplex. Alrighty, Dread throws his weight right across the chest of Azrael. But Azrael kicks it at one. Go. Oh. And as this match goes on, you know it's going to get crazy. You know it's going to get out of control. You know it's gonna fucking get all oh, hardcore as it as it can possibly get, and Dredd showing off that athletic ability right now. Look at this, big time Samoan drop there, drops right on his fucking back. Now Dredd going for something out here. We're going for that table. Yes, he is. He loves to put people through tables. I don't know why, but it's, it's something he loves to do. Well, so he did, and I mean, that's just his favorite. That's just probably his favorite weapon. But I mean, there's so many other things he do he can do too. Right now, Dread bringing everything in the ring here. Azrael has that baseball bat, really not paying attention to. Azrael here. Oh, both these guys colliding with each other. Another clothesline taking him down. Oh, nice reversal! Oh, beautiful fucking reversal there. And now Ezreal just going away, going to town at fucking Andre with that ladder. Oh, gutted him like a fish with that thing. Oh, uh oh, now Dread has that tail. Oh, oh, that ladder has seen better days. I'm telling you. Uh oh, Dread, Dread, Dread! Oh! If you heard his head just bounce off that fucking ladder there. Now it's gutting him like a fish with that table now. Now Dread has the advantage in this one. Very quiet hardcore match to be for sure. Question is, what's gonna happen? What's gonna make things really change here? Oh! Now, that may be it right there. This may be it already. This may be it right here. One. He kicks it at one. Does Azrael show off that resiliency? You get. You start to gain resiliency as you as you 
the longer you get in these hardcore style matches, you start to gain that resiliency because, or even lose it for the ones that are unlucky. But I mean, Ezreal's taking on guys like, you know, like like a like a Nero Galaxion or and and Izaki. He's taking on guys like that or Seiko Nemeth. He knows he has to keep as much. And he has to compartmentalize that body of his. Right now in trouble. Right now in trouble. Oh my gosh! Oh, and a bag was head just smashing right off that ladder. And this match may be over here. Dread wasting no time. Two. No. And a two very close to a buck and three already. Going for a choke slam here. Going for a choke slam, but Ezreal fights out of it. And now Ezreal with the advantage here. No. Oh. Oh, he just punched him right in the gut. And he's going for another gut shot there. Chopped in the throat. Oh, and a clobbering shot taking him over. Big boot tossing his body right over here. And Dred's not the guy that kind of got to play around with. Dred wants to get things done. He'll do it quickly. As slow as slow as he moves, once he gets going in that ring, he's a hard guy to stop. Taking on another table here. Whatever he wants to do is, a, is tell you it's to be a bad idea. It's to be a bad idea here. No. Oh! Fucking hey, this like I said, these tables and, and, and weapons here have seen better days. I'm telling you. Oh, and again I'm going for that. Oh, that backbreaker once again. The hell is this? Oh, look at the strength on this guy. It's insane. Oh. And you know Dread has an I uh, has a plan here or something. Either way, it's not good. It is not good for Ezreal. Ezreal has barely even moved at this point. Dread don't think he knows what wants to do with that fucking table. Either way. Going on the inside here. As, as Dread goes on the back on the outside. Oh no. Come on, Dread. Come on, Dread. No, 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 no. And you think about the whiplash effect that that just may do to Azrael there. And that, could, that could easily do it. And as good as Azrael is, this man is a monster. This guy, Dread, is a damn monster here. Dread does whatever the hell he wants to do when he wants to do it. Who's going to stop him? Who's going to stop this man? You know, that's the only thing you got to think about as well. Dread trying to set up the, the ladder, but the ladder does not the, the table, but the table does not want to fucking work together. With him here, and Azrael backing up. He knows this may be the, the biggest challenge he's taken on in a, in a very long time. But at the same time, oh, you saw Azrael trying to kick at him there. Trying to kick at him here. Oh my gosh, already. Oh, that, back, that black hole slam. That black hole slam may do it. Just messing up that fucking those steps. He's trying to move the steps of the way. Wherever the hell he wants to do at this point. Be a bad situation here for Azrael. Azrael is still moving. Referee moving the the table out of the way. Oh! Brings it back into the ring here. Oh! A kick right to the face. Azrael fighting back though. Azrael fighting back though. Kick to the midsection. DDT even flow. He may have gotten it. He may have gotten the winner here over Dread quickly. One, two, no. Like I said, a very slow-paced match. These guys don't exactly know what they want to do to each other here. They just want to do damage. Snap Mare. Right now, Ezreal trying to slow down. Or he speed up the pace here. But right now, slow, trying to slow it down. And wrenching at that neck of Dread. And Dread's the much bigger man here. But somehow just gets himself right back up into that, that position. Drop toe hole. Beautifully done. Oh! Dread falls right into the referee. Their referee draped over the ropes. Reversal there by oh! You gotta think what else, uh, whatever the hell else, what else can these guys pull off here? What else do they have in them? Can't find anything under the ring here. Rolling back inside, as big as he is, he just moves so quickly. Oh! <laughs> Oh my gosh, he just tossed him like it was nothing. Tossed him in the air like it was nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, this guy, Dread, is no joke. And now just smashing up 
that spine of Azrael here. It's a bad spot right here. This is a damn bad spot. And if you've seen what Dread has tried to do earlier with that table, just best believe it's not gonna get any better. Oh! Look at this! Oh, <laughs> that choke slam! What a choke slam there! Tosses them right over. Dread love that table is almost in love with it all, it seems. Tossing that ladder on the outside, rolling out, and not scared of Azrael here. We're going after him, even though Azrael had to, at, the, at that point had a position to really do some damage. He's too, I don't know what the hell they're thinking. No! Oh, he pushed the table. I don't know if I call I don't know, I'm sorry if I called the ladder earlier. He pushed the table right onto Azrael there. And now oh, that headbutt. This guy's a damn monster. And this is only our first match of the night, but things are getting crazy. Oh, tossing his big body into the... How the hell did he get out of that? Oh! Crowd not really behind Dread, but Dread can give a fuck less at this point. Dread wants to do damage. And if Dread wants to do what he wants to do, he'll do whatever he wants to do. Right now, oh my gosh. Oh, look at him. He's manhandling him here. Azrael can barely move, and I think this may be it here for Azrael. This may be it for Azrael here. This has to be it. Referee, one, two. No, and Azrael kicks up it two. And the look on Dread's face, you may not be able to see it through the mask. We know this frustration starting to build. Oh my gosh, he's clobbered on the, the back of his head, just clobbered into that table. I'm sorry, into that with the, there was a tan. Oh. Dread doesn't look like he's kind of got to fly here. We'll be surprised. Uh-oh. Never mind. <laughs> Azrael in trouble. Either way. Dread ready to fly. Oh, or not. Oh, jump right over him. Can't clip the side of his head with that clothesline there. Oh, Go for those shots. Those shots may do it. Punching his lights out here with that discus clothesline. Referee, referee. A little slow here. And gives all gives Dredd all the time to kick out there. You saw the, the speed of how slow the referee was. May have changed the pace of this match. Not only the pace, but the fucking complexion of this thing. Oh my gosh. Look at this, look at this, look at this, DDT, 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 he got all of it, lands right on that table as well, but Azrael just is beat, Azrael just is beat as Dread, Azrael just is beat as Dread, Dread let go for only a moment and Azrael took advantage, but right now in a lot of trouble are both these guys, Dread slowly, slowly trying to get up here, and Dread still has that, and it has the advantage of not being as beat as Azrael, and that gives him all the advantage, at the same time getting a lot slower than, than Azrael here. Oh, that fucking those those jabs, those snap jabs. Let's go for misses it, misses that drop kick right now in the bad spot. Oh, the back of his head smashing right off that that fucking table. Uh oh, if you know dread, if you know dread, you know what he wants to do. He probably wants to do more damage now. He probably wants to do more damage now at this point, and that's a bad spot right now if you're Azrael here. Oh my gosh, what is this? What is this? No, no, Billy back suplex. He lands right in his neck. Whatever Dread wants to do is what Dread wants to do. It's maybe a, not maybe a, a barn burner of a hardcore match by any means, but it is hardcore. I'm not. Oh. Uh oh. Yo, oh, just tripped him on that fucking table there, and I believe he's busted open. And then Dread right back up. Dread right back up here. And if he know if oh. Oh my gosh, he ran right into that clothesline. He ran into it. 
Saw the arm cock back for a second there, and Dread took advantage of every opportunity. Going for a slow slam here. Oh! I can see you gotta do a lot of damage to take out a guy like Ezreal, but right now, Ezreal seems like he may be in just as much trouble as anything as anyone else. Alright, now smashing that head right off that oh, right off this exposed table here. Oh, swatted it away with ease. Ezreal again, reversing whatever the hell uh, yeah, the Dread's going for, and again smashing up that head. And every time he goes after that head, oh! <laughs> Just clobbers this man down. Azrael in trouble once again. And now again, Dread with the advantage here. Takes him by his head. Just, no, just tosses him into the table. Dread wants, like I said, if Dread wants to have his way, he'll have his way. And it chokes him just maybe end of this thing. Oh my gosh. This has to be it here. Referee, one, two, three. We have a new world, sorry, we have a new hardcore champion. Like I said, this match may not have been back and forth hardcore style that you usually see with a guy like, like they usually Azrael takes on, but Dread takes his time. Dread does whatever he wants to do. If anyone gets in his way, he'll damn sure show you that hell ain't happening. It's not happening the way that you want it to happen. It's the way he wants it to happen. That power bomb right there. It's a big signifier and a big time change here. They easily could have ended the match. This is the first, the first two that we saw here, and Azrael in trouble after that, went for a choke slam, but still fought out of it somehow, some way. At this point, staying in as much as he possibly could. Oh, hits him in that clothesline there. A lot of, like I said, a lot of back and forth, big time discus punches right there. I'm sorry, big, big time punches and discus clothes on the boot to finish it, but only a two at that point. At this point here, after all the fighting on that table and such, you see, Dread just take him by his fucking neck and toss him right through that table. I mean, this match could have went on forever if it really wanted to, but Dread wanted to make sure it got done. And now we have a new Pure Chance Wrestling Hardcore Champion. I don't even know if that belt could fit around his waist, but I don't think that's what matters to him right now. What matters to him right now is that he has that belt. And he's a big motherfucker, man. Look how big this man is. The belt looks puny around, uh, on him right now. The belt is puny in his hands. He's a big bastard. And if anyone wants to take that championship away from him, you have to do a, a lot of work. I promise you that. Anyway, guys, up next. Trying to turn up the speed here a little bit on this one. PJ Vice takes on Escalade Del Torpe. Let's see what these two can do. Up next, here on Pure Test Wrestling. This is our second match of the night here, ladies and gentlemen. We're trying to, like I said before, try to uh, speed up this pace here a little bit. But right now, because of wrestling is happening in this thing right now. You have the Lucha, Lucha Libre styling of Escalator Torpe. The experience goes towards him as well. But PJ Vice is no slouch in that ring. We see him have an amazing match with, oh! Ever since had an amazing match with uh, Ale Spirals back at High Fly Flow to open the whole night. And it was amazing from start to finish. And it shows that PJ Vice belongs in that number contender, in that number contender spot. Oh! Right now, out on the floor is where he is. One's been so far tonight has been insane. Only had a one match, saw a lot of work happening between the two. Um, in the previous match being between Dread and Azrael, Azrael losing that championship after holding it for so long, but it's always in, it's always one of those guys that will can always find a way to get it back. The question is, how is he gonna do it? Rolling on up on, on the outside, and right now it's like PJ Vice is playing with. Escalator Torpe is something that usually Escalator does, where he rolls on the outside or rolls back on the inside here. Oh! Nice snap power slam. Beautifully done. Escalator has an advantage right now, it seems. Nice fireman carry reversal there by PJ Vice. PJ Vice would integrate to the brain. Knocking Escalator Torpe down quickly in this one. Off the ropes. Hurricanrana running Hurricanrana to, to, to boot. Device clump to the top as quickly as he possibly can. Let's see what he can do. Let's see if he can make some moves here. Diving leg drop. Landed right across the uh, Torpe's head. Go for a dirty pin and trying to get advanced quickly. One. Kicks it at one. PJ West wants to answer this one quickly. I, oh! Nice reversal. Yeah, he got him. Holy shit. 
PG Bison control here. Taunting we here at Escalate though. Don't want to taunt too much with him though. Just get the match done. Ducks down nicely. Sets up for that calf kick beautifully done. Keeps the Escalate down here, but only for a moment. Reverses it by reversal there by Escalate Torpe. Torpe now setting up for the Escalate the fucking uh, electric chair drop. Oof! Kick to the mid, kick to the mid section there. Kick to the leg. Another leg kick. Back kick there. Shot to the chest. Another kick to the leg. Forearm shot to the face. Keeping him down here. PJ Vice has him where he wants him. Nicely done. Beautiful bulldog. That shining wizard in the corner. Elbow right to the mid section there by Escalade the Torpe. Torpe now has him where he wants him. Headlock. Nicely done. Now tossing him over the rope once again here. Oh, PJ Vice fights back with a, with a nice reversal. Oh! Both these guys thinking the kind of the same thing here. Oh, and he caught him. He caught him. Escalado thought he was going to turn around and do something else. Torpe reversed that low too early there. He saw him kind of jump a little too early there. That cost him. PJ Vice not done just yet. Oh, bullet slide hitting him right in the leg there, but knocking him back on his face. Vice now. Vice. High kick, right? Taking him right back down. And again, going for another pin here. Is it enough? One. Two. Only two. Right now, these two are bringing it right now, but PJ Vice going on a little too early there for that pin. May have cost him, it cost him a little bit of time and a little bit of recovery time also for Escalate though. Escalate now has that headlock locked in, beautifully done, and now has that leg, oh! Dragon screw, nicely done. Fucking soccer ball kick right to the right under the gut there, right in the kidney area. That can really take you off your game quickly if you let it, if you allow it to. Turbine now has him on the top. Oh, you don't want to get you don't want to get PJ Vice on the top rope. Oh, but Escalado probably probably had plans for that. Probably knew that he was gonna do that. Now set up for that fucking reverse elbow right across the chest, and now going for a, a pin of his own here. A pin of his own here. One, two, no. Escalado can't lose his cool. He cannot lose his cool in this one here. PJ Vice grabbing a little bit quicker in this one, a little quicker in this exchange here, but Escalado Torpe saw it coming. Nice clothesline taking his head clean off and easily, and easily turn them this match back in his favor here. And this is what I'm talking about. This way to see. This is where I'm talking about the speed now being changed into the favor of Escalado Torpe, I mean, but only for a moment. Shot right to the face. PJ Vice not playing games here. The hell is this? Oh shit. Oh my gosh, that swing neck right off the top, off the fucking top rope there. Oh, Mongolian chop. Kick to the leg. Another Mongolian. This way he does well. This way he does well. Hammerlock clothesline beautifully. Done. I don't know what PJ Vice's plans are, but I'll tell you what. He needs to get a little closer if he wants to do anything crazy. If he wants to play anything off. Oh! BJ Vice, no dummy, knows how to get out of that ring and take advantage of all the time he can get. At the same time, he's giving Escalos all Torpe all the time to turn this thing around into his own favor here. Going for a Tiger Suplex, beautifully done. That could be it right there. That could be it right there. Two. No, he kicks out of two. Torpe, like I said, knows this ring well, but so does PJ Vice. PJ Vice set up for another, another one of those. Oh, and he got it this time. Welcome to Chicago, good motherfucker. That butterfly backbreaker just made do it right there. Referee call it as it is. One, two, no. Only a two, only a two. Peach Vice cannot lose his cool. Cannot lose it. Cannot. Oh, lose his mind in this one. He has to stay on him. Escalator with a head scissors. Oh, headlock DDT, whatever you want to call it. Toby flying out to the top. I don't know what his plans are, but whatever he wants to go for, he's going for the top for it. Let's see what he can do. All right, this guy's ready to jump. This guy's ready to jump. I don't know. I think he's waiting for PJ Vice to get up here. Oh, PJ Vice punching back there, but only for a moment. DDT. We saw him block the fist and just reverse that. And now with that next snap, he's going for that running next snap. He'd love to go for He got all of it. Escalator Torpe, exactly where he wants things to be. Exactly where he wants things to be. Another one of those elbows right across the chest again. 
And going for another one of those pins. Let's see if he can do it here. One, two, no. Only two. Only a two. And now Torpe needs to realize that he has the, he can he get he needs to do more. He needs to do a little more than he was doing before. This Rio Sunset Flip. This can be it right here. One. He reverses it. PJ Vice reverses it. Two. Back and forth again. And he kicks out at one. Wasting no time. These guys are getting it going. Kick to the leg once again. Sets up. Anaconda Vice. This can be all of it. This can be it right here. This can be it right here. Trying to lock it in. I mean, he hasn't locked it, but he's trying to hold him down as much as he possibly can here. This is what I'm talking about. The submission styling that PJ Vice brings to that ring. This is the submission styling that can, has, has won him championships before. And so he came back here for a reason. He came back to win. He came back to do things here. Let's go. Cool. Let's go. This PJ Vice. PJ Vice knows better. PJ Vice knows better. Go! Oh! He was going for it. I don't know what the hell he's going for, but now, whatever the case may be, he has this match in the, in the way he wants it. He has this match the way he wants it. Waiting and abiding his time. Kick to the midsection there. Tosses him off the ropes. Big time calf kick taking him down. Another calf kick taking him down. Ducks the line. Turns it and weaves it through with that neck breaker. That's what you, that's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do. Vice, Vice knows this. Vice knows this. Turns him over. Setting up that, that shiny wizard. Bouncing off that rope there. He got it with full speed. This is what I'm talking about. PJ Vice bringing it. PJ Vice bringing it. Setting up. Setting up for that go to sleep. Setting up for that go to sleep. But Escalo Torpe is suck coming a mile away. Reverses into a reverse DDT. Escalo has him where he wants him now. Escalo has him where he wants him now. Kicks the guts. Catch, sorry. Catches the leg. Sets up for something. Looks like. Looks like a falcon arrow here. But no. Another reversal. Big time reversal there by Escalo. Oh. Smacked right to the face. And again, set him up, set him up on that top rope there. Swing with that neck breaker. He got all of it. This match back and forth has been amazing. I'm loving these guys bringing it right now. Again, go. Oh! And again, misses it, but throws his body into him anyway. Vice now, picking him back up for something. Look at this. Could be a brain buster. Looks like he set him for one. Yes, he got all of it. You can't rest though. You can't rest at the same time. You have to, you have to know when to hold him, when to fold him. And right now, he's just maybe getting folded. Is Escalator Torpe as he sets up for another one of those butterfly super butterfly backbreakers? But no reversal there by Escalator Torpe once again. Torpe now. Torpe now. Has where he wants him. Oh, he caught the. He's going a little too early there. Oh, caught a backhand to the face. Waiting for him, testing him, saying, hell, come on, come on, bring it, let's go. Toss him into the corner there. Off the corner does Escalator go. Ducks the line. And hits him with that elbow, and knocks the referee out as well. And that may cost him this match. That may cost him all this match here. No reversal there by PJ Vice. Oh, slap there by PJ Vice. Close on taking him over. PJ Vice in control here, and this is what I like to see from this man. Torpe bringing it just as much as PJ Vice has brought it, and I'm loving this fucking technical ability being shown by these, both these guys here. Oh, and he flies right into him, but slides off the side of the, on that on the fucking bottom rope there. And as you guys get more tired, things like that may just start to pop up and happen. Vice no dummy though, gets him back in the ring. Does a little damage to keep it up. Doesn't want to slow down the pace here if, if, if anything possible. Tries to want to keep as much pace as you can. Now from the second row, going for another move. Oh, and this time, this time swatted away there by Escalator. Escalator takes advantage, tosses him into the corner here. And those kicks, he's throwing those kicks right into the chest of PJ Vice here. And that's what I'm talking about, in control, in control here. Oh! Just kicking those feet right into him. I'd like to see it. Believe Cesaro's passing by my home, ladies and gentlemen. And again, reversal there by PJ Vice. 
Set up for that butterfly, butter, back, 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 back breaker one more time, but again, again, reversal there by Escalato. Torby doesn't have much left in him, but he's going to the top for something big. He's going for the top for something big here. Wait for it, but oh shit, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, fucking PJ Vice, PJ Vice with the go to sleep, he got all of it. He got all of it. Is it enough? The referee. Two, three, and this one is over. Holy shit, out of nowhere, catches them with that go to sleep. I was not expecting that in this match. This match was back and forth, and I mean, this is why these guys do it. And I'm telling you, it's, someone argue with me and tell me that these guys are getting worse. These guys are getting better. These guys are getting better every fucking time they step in that ring. And it's not just these two. It's every person that steps in between these ropes. Everyone that's in this universe has been bringing it, bringing their best, their A game. Whether they win or lose, they bring it as much as they possibly can. And it's only because things are starting to start to start to really starting to speed up here as this as these months starting to close in here we start to notice more and more and more and how more important these matches have been and these matches have been nothing but important this match was amazing from start to finish like i said this is gonna be a long night because of uh, the, the importance here like i said right now already it's our second match and i'm already about 30 fucking almost 40 minutes in this has been amazing and this is the kind of style this is the kind of style I like to, to see here you have the like I said the Lucha Libre styling that technical high flying ability being shown there by Escalade Torpe a legend in the business for guys of the, the cruiserweight style right there you saw you saw PJ Vice use that technical ability to stay in this one and then out of nowhere catch him when that go to sleep knocks him the hell clean out there even though his hands well under the rope but he don't call it a rope because the referee didn't see it anyway regardless of such PJ Vice with a big victory here but taking out the win Escalade Torpe, that was an amazing, and I mean amazing match. Up next, Azul King Jr. takes on John Lucas Jr. These two get it going. I can't wait for it. It's up next, here on Pure Intense Wrestling. Yeah. This is our third match tonight here, ladies and gentlemen. These two are going to get it going. John Lucas Jr. a little bit, um, going for a little more of that quicker, you know, smarter, faster, a little faster approach, where they were. Azul King Jr. takes his time and Wears you down as much as he possibly can. At the same time, you talk about wearing someone down. Junglist Jr. is that guy to do it. Probably the longest reigning, inter well, sorry, the pure intense wrestling intercontinental champion that we've had, even though he's lost it recently. Ooh, to Uha, who will be in action later on tonight against Ethan Baker. You can't take anything away. Ooh, you can't take anything away. From a guy like John Lewis Jr., this guy can get out just about any submission hold that he's been put into, and that says a lot. There's not a lot of guys who can also not only put you in um, amazing submissions, but also can, oh, fight out of them as well. And this is the guy that kind of guy that can do that. Oh, but at the same time, Azui King Jr. is no slouch in that ring. Probably one of, one, one of the better, easily the, one of the best Lucha Libre wrestlers of all time. That says a lot, and I mean a says a lot. This guy is damn good. But it's kind of fallen off as of late. Kind of fallen off that the um, the bandwagon here for when it comes to uh, showing that Lucha Libre style when he gets in this ring, and also being the best. He he wants to still be the best, and he I mean he is. There's nothing. There's no doubt about that. But he's also like I said, it's fallen off that bandwagon of just being good, just being good in everything he and in winning matches as well. I mean, Azul King Jr. has won his fair share of matches in his time. At the same time, still. These new guys are starting to come up, and he needs to find a way to evolve into with these guys as well. Standing, sure, and Nui, they're taking down John Lewis Jr., though. And this is doing a great good job right now of keeping him down. Big time moonsault. They're standing moonsault, to be more exact. John Lewis Jr. has, like I said, a technical ability in this one. But needs to figure out how to get out of this thing before it's too late. Oh! Oh, there we go right there. That could be it. That could be the change that he needs. That could be the change that he needs, but takes it. It goes for the kick. Misses it by just a few inches. And right there. Oh. We see the thing starting to go into Azul King Jr.'s favor there. Nice reversal there after that. Oh. Go for something big again, but another arm drag reversal there by Azul. DDT. So maybe the shorter one on this in this match here for sure, but that shortness has definitely helped him advantage-wise um, a lot more than it's been a disadvantage. Okay, the mid-section there by Azul. 
Hammer lock. Oh, Gentleman's Clutch to be more exact. Gentleman's Clutch. Kicks out of one to Zul King Jr. Gentleman Jr. is now trying to find his spot. Trying to find what he has to do now. And waiting is what he's going to do. He's waiting is, and abiding his time is what he's going to do. One for something here. Big, big time Dragon Suplex. He could do it right there. That could do it right there. Okay. Fucking referee very slow at a one there. Oh, kick to the face. And a DDT of his own. Oh, kicked him right in the fucking back of the head there. And now look at this. Look at this. He's grapevining those legs there. Now has him set up for a Mexican surfboard there. Nicely done. That surfboard stretch has taken out a many. Holy shit. This guy, I mean, we talk about submissions. This guy is the fucking, I'm telling you, it's like the master of submissions here in Pure Intense Wrestling. This is guy can take you it's any bitch any, about any other way he wants to. Oh! Catches those legs. Not going after those same legs. Now saying, I believe for a Muda lock here. Oh, or not. Oh! He throws his whole body, his whole weight on the back of those legs there. Now definitely keep Azul King Jr. from flying if he keeps on him. Setting up, setting up, setting up, setting up. Tiger suplex, Tiger suplex, referee. One, two. Only two. This guy's not playing any games. Azul needs to figure it out. John Jr. manhandling Azul just because he's smaller here, but don't count out his size at all. Sets up as something, but no. Up to the top, but a knee hitting him right in the hand there as he uses that. He uses those arms to pull himself up. And now in trouble. Getting down. I think he's gonna go for a jump, but oh! He's gonna jump for or something like that. So Brazil thought better of it, and it was a it was a big decision that could have easily swayed the match in either one of these guys' favor, depending on who landed, who didn't. Running drop kick, taking down Azul. Uh, sorry, John Lucas Jr. Once again. Now Azul back in control here. Picks him, picks him right back up. Swats that form shot away. Oh, and a form shot of his own. If we had a five here, these guys have no disrespect against each other, but best believe that one of these guys want to come out of victor. Or if we had a six, a kick to the mid section will do it. Still stunned there for a moment. Only for a moment though. Oh, belly to back suplex. Lands nothing lands on nothing but that fucking barely any soft paddock. Oh! Whoa, I don't think I've ever seen someone get out of that fucking gentleman's clutch there. Either way, he runs right into, oh my gosh, holy shit, he just ran right into a tiger bomb there. And John Lewis Jr. can easily walk away with this match. John Lewis Jr. throwing that finger, saying he's number one right now. He just may be. He has the advantage over Azul King Jr. Azul's been bringing it though. Azul's been being just as bad as technical as, jo as John Lucas Jr. has been. The hell is this? Oh! Same for us, uh, something there, but Azul again saw coming. Swatted away that whatever the hell he was going for. Lucas takes advantage. Lucas takes advantage. Sets up that Northern Light suplex. Going after that neck. Very smart to stay on that neck as well. The hell is this? Arm bar just quickly goes in a cross arm breaker there. This match could easily be over with that. We've seen Azul use that same move as well to help him help him wear down his opponents. Especially opponents that are very strong. For sure, when it, in their arms, it, it, and you have a guy like that on your arm constantly, I mean, it can take you off your game. Our arm bar is no joke, but somehow, some way, Azul fights out of it. Oh, fucking a! What the hell is this? Octopus stretch here. Hold, that means Don Jr. just just finds a way every damn time to wear down his opponent somehow, some way. His submissions, his submission game is insane. I'm telling you, his submission game is insane. But Azul again fighting out of it, and this time tripping him up. Swatted away that hand. Oh, Hurricane easily wants to finish with a Hurricane here. One, two, no. Oh, reverses it. One, two, 
No! Kicks out of it. He gets caught. He gets caught. He's in front of a DT, but no. Azul gets out of it. Jones Jr. right back up. Form shot. Taking him down. Clothesline right back into it. These guys are bringing it. And I'm loving this. I'm this speed is definitely turned up to a thousand right now. Leg trip there. What a match this has been. Right back and into it. Now throwing those kicks into the chest. Blasting him with those kicks as well. Oh, hesitation, drop kick, wasting no time. Sets up, sets up for that submission hold. And I mean, he's been working it on Azul King Jr. this whole match. And not only does he grab the, uh, one arm, but he grabs one leg as well. Not a lot of place to go, not a lot of space to go either. There's not a lot of space to go right now. And Azul King Jr. is in so much damn trouble. Azul's in so much damn trouble here. And he has no choice but to tap Azul King Jr. Close but not close enough. Jones Jr. showing off that submission skill that he has and wore down a guy like Azul King Jr. And the size advantage that he had in this one has definitely helped him for sure. This is the kind of guy that as always, somehow, some way, finds himself in a, in a title shot. And I, I, I wouldn't believe, I would I wouldn't even say that he wouldn't be in one soon enough. Because I, again, it, this guy is so damn good. Holy shit, back and forth. I love this match. It was crazy. And then it sped up at the end there by a, a, a fuck ton. That was crazy. And that comeback that John Lewis Jr. brought back was amazing. But right here, just playing around with Azul for a while. And then after a while, Azul was done playing games. He was done playing games and brought it and brought it. And damn near almost ended that match with that Hurricanrana at the end there. But it wasn't enough. He probably could have went for the Tiger Fent kick. But at the same time, Azul... I mean, uh, John Lewis Jr. is so damn quick. He probably caught him out of the air somehow, some way. You never know. But either way, look at the submission hold here. He has not only the arm caught in the arm bar, but the leg caught in the leg bar as well. And has nowhere to go. This is Azul King Jr. Azul, as resilient as he may be, couldn't hold on for too long. And when you're in a submission like that, there's not a lot of space to go. Amazing match between these two. That was amazing. I love that match. Good shit, good shit on both these guys. And anyway, guys, up next, Michael Collins takes on Justin Icon. You got these two big bohemas, and they're going to fucking bring it in this one. The question is, who's going to win it? Will it be Michael Collins? Will it be big Michael Collins? Or will it be Justin Icon? Justin Icon, no joke. Let's get it. Let's get it. What's up next, here on Pure Intense Wrestling. This is our fourth match tonight here, ladies and gentlemen. Justin Icon takes on Michael Collins, and Michael Collins is not gonna be he's not gonna be nice in this one either. Neither is Justin Icon. We saw crazy matches last week. We saw Michael Collins with a nice victory for himself. We saw Justin Icon an amazing victory for himself as well last week. These two know how to wear each other down. These two guys know each other well. These two guys are good in that ring. Which one of these two are good enough to get a victory over the other? Nice wear down submission holds here. Early on in this match, we saw an amazing submission victory there for John Lewis Jr. Most of his matches are done that way. It's all about timing and, and knowing when to strike, when the when strike when the iron's hot, strike when it's time. You don't just go in there and try to mix the one tap out too early. You gotta know how to you gotta wear him down first. And what was happening in that match? Oh! What happened in that last match was it was a perfect example of why John Lewis Jr. is one of the best when it comes down to breaking a opponent's will. Power when it's taking uh, taking out someone's willpower, he knows how to do it. Sam fucker cravat neckbreaker, cravat neckbreaker there by Justin Icon, and already this match could be over. Icon no dummy. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not Icon. Uh, Justin Icon, Michael, I mean, Michael Collins no dummy. And already, oh my gosh, he just tossed him on the back of his neck there. And Collins up at the top quickly. Mike Collins up to the top quickly in this one. Oh, went for it too. Went for it too early there. Got caught up. Check out PureIntenseWrestling.com, ladies and gentlemen, as you get all the greatest and, and the latest of on news and on wrestling, on Pure Intense Wrestling at that. I do want to do a uh, Wikipedia page for uh, Pure Intense Wrestling, Crash Pimp Wrestling, and Divas at some point. So if you guys want to know about that, I will have, uh, I'm, I'm working on it as of every other week. I'm writing up another, you know, biography for another wrestler, so... When that does happen, I will let you guys know for sure. But as always, if you've enjoyed these matches so far tonight, or have enjoyed anything I've done here, and in in, um, just not only tonight, but later on, if you've missed matches or whatever the case may be, if you're, whatever the case may be, if you haven't already, if you're new to this, come like, subscribe. It helps me out so much. If you haven't already, please, it helps me out so much.
Rolls out of that quickly. Oh! Both these guys are just so damn quick. And right now, Icon just tossed him on the outside. Saw Collins trying to go for that setup for that. Ooh! He saw Collins try to set up for that uh that double knee face breaker there. Oh my gosh, no way! Michael Collins waiting his opportune time. Oh! Referee recounted that count there. Oh my gosh, did you hear that? Oh my gosh, he did it again! Kick to the mid section there. Just may do it. But Icon wears him down. Smashes the dead arm there. He knows that the power, if he, if he know, he, Icon knows. Icon knows for sure that when it comes down to it, if he can break down that arm, those, break down those arms of Michael Collins there, he's not going to be able to pick up a guy like Icon. Icon's no small man by any means. Icon wasting no, wasting no time to get back in the ring. And we'd love to win this thing via count out here. Michael Collins not having any of that. Oh, right behind the referee, he comes up with a clothesline. Damn near decapitating Justin Icon. Icon reverses it with a punch to the mid section there. Ducks under it. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. Icon in trouble here. Happened half there. What has this match turned into? These guys are beating the hell out of each other here. These guys are behemoths in this ring. Don't let Michael Collins height fool you. He has the size to compensate for it. And right now, showing off that so oh, power advantage. For only for a moment, snap mirror reversal, but it reverses her into a Russian leg sweep does Michael Collins. Collins has him where he wants some elbow right across the chest. And set up for another one there. These guys are bringing it. I'm loving it. I'm loving every last bit of this thing here. Let's see what these can do. Let's see what Michael Collins can do here. Look at this suplex into a side slam. And throws that elbow, that right, elbow right across the chest of Icon here. And Icon kicks it at two. Icon waiting and abiding his time, and Collins up. Collins up on that second rope there. Look at this. Oh, hits nothing but canvas after that. Icon takes it. Uh, Icon going for a roll up here. Icon going for a roll victory here. And a kick out there. A kick out there early there by Mike. Going for those legs again, and now wearing, trying to wear down the arms and legs, just like uh, just like a John Lewis Jr. did in the in the previous match here. And now Icon has him where he wants him. Oh, ducks under it, ducks away from it. I mean, sorry, what we're talking about sets up for that power bomb. It's taken out of many. It may be Icon's time. It may be Icon's time. Here, the rope break, only thing that saved him. The rope break, the only thing that may have saved just an Icon from getting pinned out here. This, this, these guys are just so damn amazing in this ring. Sets up, sets up the air raid, crash, he crashes in his head right in back into that fucking mat Then This could easily be it. This could easily be it here. Two, three, and it's over. The air raid crash is taken out of many, and Justin Icon was another victim of that. Back and forth, these two went, and we saw the the we saw the the fucking the speed, this tempo of this match start to speed up at the around the end of it. That was fucking insane. Back and forth between these two, like I said, these guys know each other so damn well. It was an amazing match, and whether or not Justin Icon wins or loses the match, whatever match you put this guy in, he kills it. And it's always been how that's always how it's been with this guy. He's a guy that studies every person he takes on. We saw amazing, amazing fucking speed from guys that are shouldn't be moving at the speed they move. Look at this right here, trying to fly across, duck and hits it, just misses it there. Icon tries to take advantage there with that roll up, only gets a fucking one. Takes advantage right after this power bomb, beautifully done. And the only thing that may have saved Icon was that fucking rope. But at this point here, he with that air raid crash. His back of his head just collides right after on and on the weight as well, laying on that neck. Of Icon only gets himself a three at the end of that one. What an amazing, amazing victory for this guy here. Michael Collins seems like he's back in it. I well, let's hope that he is. Let's hope that he is. He's been bringing it. He's been bringing it. Let's see what we can do as his as his uh weeks go on. And anyway, guys, up next, Travis Leone takes on Chuck White. I'll talk about these two as this match starts up up next here on Pure Intense Wrestling. This is for the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. This is our fifth match of the night. And I think this match just may be more, probably one of the greatest of the night. We'll, we'll find out by the end of it, won't we? Right now we have the current Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Chuck White, defeating Tra Trevor Locke last week in a very 
I don't know how you would say the match. I, it was very shocking, for sure. And uh, at that point, Trevor Black only had the only had the belt for a night and barely even 24 hours. That that says a lot. And, and it's not and it's nothing against no oh! nothing. It's it's nothing against uh, Trevor Lock and his being there. But it just things happen. Things tend to happen. And that, even though he's the high fly flow winner as well, that Cruiserweight Champion only lasted for so long. But you can't say you can't take anything away from saying that he's oh not the Cruiserweight or oh, sorry not the High five vote winner here. Oh! This exploding suplex there by Travis Young. Travis Young a lot more aggressive than his partner, Chuck White. But at the same time, knows Chuck White pretty fucking well. But Chuck White knows Travis Young pretty well as well. Super kick blast him right on his face. Easily, Chuck White could have flew right onto Travis Young there. Waits for his time. Oh! These, tag, these guys, tag team uh, brethren here, taking each other on. And it's, almost, it's just weird how things have turned into this turn the way that it did for these two there's no hatred between these two by any means of any of anything other of that sort but these two will work their asses off to wrestle each other here one of these two are going to come out the cruiserweight champion of the world the question is who is going to be will it be oh travis leone or will it be chuck white these guys former pure intense wrestling world tag team champions no risk like to be in that ring against each other oh back on nxt Chuck White was the guy, he was the man for a while holding that NXT championship. Before coming to Pure Intense Wrestling. Here in Pure Intense Wrestling where, he, where Travis Leone found Chuck White. Chuck White said he wanted to create a tag team with someone that he, that he, that he feels like he wants to know well. And these two became dead, damn their best friends for that. Look at this. No. Oh. Chuck White ready to fucking go. Ready to make things happen here. Oh. Man. He went for that shooting star press off that springboard. And that may have cost him there. Because like I said, Travis Young knows Chuck White so damn well. It's hard to really pull something off too much onto someone else that you know. It's not a lot of moves you can really pull off. Your biggest moves may be your biggest downfall. Because they, of the knowledge these two know of each other. Travis Young tossing Chuck White over the top. Crashing right on his back there. And especially when, when you land at that, at that, not only at that angle, but landing the way that he did. May cost him. Look at this. Roll up here. Roll up here. But you can't, leave, you can't do a roll up on the outside. Chuck White ready to fly though. Oh my gosh. And lands right on him. Almost flew into the crowd there. Right now the speed of this match has definitely turned up to a fucking thousand here. Sets up for something, but no, but no, Travis Young again reverses it. Like I said, knowing each other so damn well. Up to the top quickly. Oh, he kicked him right in the fucking leg there. He had no choice but to fall over. And now Travis Young has advantage. Travis Young has the advantage now and just may have him where he wants him. Nicely done with that Michinoku driver. Now Travis Young at the top. Now usually you see Travis Young at the top there. But when he gets up there, he can do whatever he wants to do. Right now the advantage going to Travis Leon. And one thing that Chuck Will wants to watch out for is that double foot, that running double foot stomp. He jumps in the air, gets air time, this guy does. And will fucking fly at you. And right now in a bad spot. Oh. Travis Leon doing things that Chuck White doesn't know too much of. One, two, no. Again, Chuck White kicks out, but Travis Young in control of this match at this pretty much this whole time here. Let's see what he can do. Oh, and then going for it, I move again, and this time Chuck White just may have it here. Two rolls over, gets him right back up, and these two are just going. I'm loving this match right now. Snap Mare wearing him down, trying to slow down the pace and trying to keep Chuck White on the ground. Travis Young knows he's the slower of the two in this one. He knows he's the power game to Chuck White's speed game. He knows this. He knows that they're pretty much they're pretty much um, polar opposites of each other, which makes their tag team's match, matches work so damn well. At the same time, Chuck White, no slouch in that ring. Enziguri swatted away. This, an exploding suplex the third time. This time he got it. Chuck White, I mean, yeah, Chuck White needs to watch out here. Sets up, sets up for that gut wrench, and he tosses him like it's nothing. And again, going for a hook of the leg. One, 
No, and he kicks it at one. You may not like either of these guys. You may love these guys. You may like one of them, the other one not. It doesn't matter. These guys are getting it going. Talk about getting it going. Chuck West ready to get it going in this thing here. Up to the top quickly. Wasting no time. Shooting star press. And he got all of it. And Travis Leon may be out. Travis Leon may be out of it here. One. Two. No. And Travis Leon kicks it to two. This is for the Cruiserweight Championship of the world here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. <laughs> Just blast around the side of the head. Chuck White ready to fucking bring it here. Let's see what he can do. Let's see what this guy can do in control so far. Forearm shot taking him down. Another shot taking him down. Ducks the line. Pele kick. They should know each other by now. Chuck White now. Back in control. Tossing Travis Leone into the corner here. Sets up for... Oh! Ducks that, ducks that fucking running... Uh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh! He may have it here. One, two. No! He kicks out a two. And Travis Leone knows how close he was after that fucking package driver. He drove Chuck White's head clear into the mat after Chuck White misses that running and Zagori into the corner. Oh! Shit out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Travis Leone right back up. Travis Leone right back up. And Chuck White takes a, try, try to take a, tries to take advantage of that. Look at this. Arm drag from the top. Picks him right back up. Now Travis Leone in, in control here. Warm shot taking him down now. Another one. This time a sling blade. The difference is just so small between these two. They know each other so damn well. Travis Leone. In control here. Again. Again. Setting up. Setting up. Oh! Cut right suplex once again. The pain has to be showing. Is now showing here on Travis. Trying to pull Chuck White closer. Or cl trying to pull Chuck White away from the ropes. He knows how good he is. And again kicks out at one. This time Travis Young kicking out at one. Sorry, uh, Chuck White kicking out at one. Travis Young, you see the frustration showing on his face now. Oh, he clobbers him in the back of the head. Chuck White in trouble here. Travis Young ready to finish. Catches the foot there. Catches the foot. Kick to the midsection. Bounces off the ropes. Gets the, trying to get some speed here. Drop kick to the side of the head. Crowd blown away at both these guys. They know how th they know how these guys act, but you gotta give them all the credit in the world. This match has been amazing here so far. Back and forth, back and forth. Love to see clothesline taking him over. Chuggle ready to fly. Chuggle ready to fly. But Travis Leon knows him so damn well. He hits him with that elbow right to the back of the fucking head. How often do you see someone get cut off like that so quickly? And that's why I mean Travis Leon so damn good at being good and at the same time knowing. Knowing Chuck White so damn well. And now Travis Leon at the top rope. Let's see what he can do. Let's see what he can do here. Both of the moves up. Swat it away. Chuck White takes advantage of the opportunity. Chuck White takes advantage of the opportunity. Going for a springboard here. Let's see what he can do. Springboard. Drop kick to the midsection. Holy shit, this match is not, this is, I did not expect this. I did not expect this from both these guys. Look at this, suplex, beautifully done. Uh-oh. Chuck right at the top here, again. Let's see what he can do. Oh my gosh, reverse 450, reverse 450. That could be it right there, referee. Two, no, and he kicks out a two. Guys looking at each other for a moment, just looking at each other, trying to figure out what the next person is gonna do, and now, now wearing him down again. Chuck White going in and going for that kick a little too early there. Cost him to cost him, just may have cost him this match. You never know. That wear down can take you down so quickly. And now Tra the Travis Young being the stronger of the two. Definitely wearing down Chuck White for sure. Chuck White takes advantage and gets himself back up now. It's stand at standing position. Oh. This fisherman suplex, fisherman suplex, he got all of it. Goes for the pin, throw right across, right already, 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 wasting no time. Chuck White kicks out again. He does not want to lose that Cruiserweight Championship of the world. 
Jefferson would love to have it as well. Yeah, like I said, there's no hatred between these two. But they know that it's not they're not gonna they're not gonna give each other an easy night. That would that would break the code of what these guys came here to do. Regardless of them being against each other or teaming up with each other, they bring their best. Whether you love or hate these guys, that's what they're all about. Elbow to the back of the head, Travis Young gets some Russell Royal with some swats of the way. That fucking cross body. Chuck White takes advantage of the opportunity. Sets up for another one of those suplexes, I believe. This time he got it. He got all of it. Chuck White ready to throw, ready to go. Toss him into the corner once again. Ends up going cracking. You can hear the sound of it cracking off the skull of Travis Young here. Chuck White in control. Ready to fly to the top as quickly as he possibly can. He must hit that 630. He just may be able to hit it. He just may be able to hit it here. We'll find out in a moment. Chuck White always wants to give himself some, some time and some space. Oh, he lands right across that chest. And easily, this match can be over. This match can be over here. Two, three, and this one is over. Chuck White showing off here for sure with that 630 cent on. But you got to believe there's love, nothing but love between these two. That was an amazing match, though. The back and forth between it was amazing. Right here early on, we saw a big time reversal. That it wasn't even necessary. But either way, went for it. Went for everything. They got easy guys went for everything here. I mean, even Chuck White trying to jump on the outside there, and tr Travis just cut him off. That's the knowledge of knowing that your your per that the person you teamed up with just about every other night. Back and forth, but it wasn't enough. It just wasn't enough back and forth. I was loving this matchup. This fisherman's suplex easily could have ended this whole match. Wasn't enough just yet. Right here at the end. At the end though, we saw that 6:30 sent on, and every time this guy pulls it off, it was so damn beautiful. Watch this. Wait for it. Gets it 660 degrees. So, sorry, 630 degrees. 630 cents on. And he got all of it. You may love or hate Chuck White, but you gotta give him credit. Holding that Cruiserweight Championship of the World is what he wants. And he, want, and he, he wants to keep that as long as he possibly can. We win it, win it, but you never know. A guy like, uh, like Travis Young can pop up again. Friend or foe, that championship is on the line every week. And guys, up next, holy shit, that was amazing. Up next, we have two big, uh, two more big bohemians taking each other on, which uh, Ethan Baker returns to the ring here tonight as he takes on Uha for the Pure Intense Wrestling Intercontinental Championship. This is our semi main event. It's up next here on Pure Intense Wrestling. This is for the Pure Intense Wrestling Intercontinental Championship and Ethan Baker takes on Uha. <laughs> this fucking dry ass fucking throat. These I've been yelling this whole time. This matches these matches have been insane. Oh! And already there's not gonna be a lockup between these two. As big as they are, there's no locking up between these two. These guys are just gonna beat the fuck out of each other. And I'm loving every minute of it already. Look at this. Setting up for a brain buster. Oh no, never mind. Fucking jackhammer-esque slam there. Baker right back up and into it. Baker a little bit quicker than Uha, believe it or not. As quick as Uha is, Baker prides himself on being a quick big man. Uha using that strength that you don't you expect you don't you expect it from him, but you don't expect when you see him actually throw off use that strength. Right now using that strength to outdo Ethan Baker here. And get the advantage at the same time. Oh my gosh, he just gets caught. He just gets caught. And everything Ethan Baker's trying to throw at Uha right now is not going to work. He needs to realize that Uha has been fucking working his ass off. He's been training. Has been getting himself in the fucking gym. Not only to get be to be at better, but also training in this ring at the same time. Taking on guys, going to Crash Man Pro Wrestling. Defending the championship everywhere he goes. This is a guy that you got to watch out for. Uha has always been that guy you got to watch out for. This man is a... Oh! The damn beast. If the Uha Nation is behind him, if the Uha Nation he likes to call is behind him, it's gonna help him out so much. Right now, Ethan Baker though could give a fuck about it. a nation. He's a one-man wrecking machine. Oh, oh, spinning back kick right there. Baker got knocked the hell back down. Uha showing off his speed, athleticism that we see from him all the damn time. 
That knee to the back of the head, doing him damage. Uha in control. Toss him into the corner. See what he has. Let's see what he has planned here. Ethan Baker is too damn strong right now to get tossed by something that easily. Tosses him down with ease. Hits that moonsault from the second row. And already Baker going for a pin of his own here. Referee quickly. Two. Only two. Baker getting that speed. Holy shit. Oh. Ethan Baker cutting the hair like he did once before. I think this keeps him keeps him from uh it makes him feel I guess it makes him feel better or something of that sort. Either way, splashes right into him. Oh, the strength being shown here by by both these guys is amazing. But right now, in trouble, in trouble, and look at the strength. Look at the strength here on Baker. Easily, easily, this match could easily be over. Uha reverses. Oh, you saw him catch the leg and then throws the punch right into the face. Damn near knocking him out. Sets up the ends of Gurry knocking down Ethan Baker. This one could be over quickly. Baker goes, I mean, sorry, Ethan Baker in trouble here. One, two, no. Now Baker kicking out. And this is where he wants to be. He, wants, he doesn't want to be in the ground, but he wants to be in the, still in uh, a good position of getting himself back into this thing here. Baker has him where he wants him. Sets up, swinging, neck breaker. He got all of it. Baker flying up to the top. This is the kind of guy that can fly. Believe it or not, don't let his size fool you. Let's see what he can do. Elbow right across the chest. This man moves so damn quick. Holy shit, referee. Two. And a kick out at two there by Uha now. These guys are going to wear, wear each other down so easily. Oh my gosh, out of nowhere, Uha just flew at Ethan Baker there. Holy shit. Who has him where he wants him? Who has him where he wants him? Look at this. Oh, using that size advantage to, to fucking put the pressure, put the pressure down there on Uha there. Using that size advantage, the weight advantage, and he threw him right all across the chest of Uha here. Doing a damn good job, and that's what I'm talking about. The reversals that these guys are pulling off too. Not only just these guys, but everyone here tonight. Everyone in the last few weeks. It's just been amazing. These guys have been showing, and these guys and girls have been showing that they can go. Oh, to the midsection. I kept adding his midsection now. Punch right to the midsection. Uh, sorry, yeah, punch right to the midsection there. Ethan Baker playing no games. Pulls him back, but no, Uha throws him back. The hell is Uha thinking here? Ethan Baker ready to fly. Oh! Ethan Baker ready to fly here. Oh my gosh, no! Oh! Oh! Oh my gosh, that base body just abused him with that. Referee didn't see anything. He's knocked out there as Ethan, Ethan Baker flew into him. And I think that was supposed to happen. I think he did that deliberately. He did that deliberately. He flew into the referee the way he did. He may love or hate Ethan Baker, but what he did there. Fucking A. Oh! Jawbreaker just blast him. Holy shit. Uha flying up to the top. This match could easily be over at 637. I'm sorry, that reverse 450. He loves to go for. Let's see what we can do. Reverse 450. He got it. But doesn't hook the leg. Doesn't hook the leg. Taking too much time to hook the leg. And that may cost him here. And he kicks out at one to Ethan Baker. What a fucking match this has been here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is pure and test wrestling. This is what these guys do day in, day out. They're just so damn good. I think Baker wants to toss Uha across the fucking ring here. Let's see what he can do. And Baker playing here, playing. That's going to cost him, though. That's going to cost him. Oh my gosh, look at this. Fall away slam, fall away slam. He go! Tossed him across the ring here. Ladies and gentlemen, Ethan Baker. Ladies and gentlemen, Ethan Baker. We throw that lion salt. Beautifully done. Springboard moonsault, whatever you want to call it. Two. No. Ethan Baker, I think, has more plans. He let go. He let go. He, oh, let go here. Oh, no. 
Oh no, look at this. Oh no, look at this. No, 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 no. No! Oh, and the size of the size of Uha. Uh -huh. The size of Uha. Uh -huh. That does even more damage there. Two. Three. And this one is over. Ethan Baker with a big time victory. We have a new Pure Intense Wrestling Intercontinental Champion. Holy shit. From the swinging neck breaker to everything that these guys brought. I mean, Uha uh -huh was prone to brain as much as he could, but Ethan Baker was on another level here tonight. Ethan, um, Ethan, uh, what's his name? Like, fucking gosh. Uha does get a rematch clause for sure. Simply for holding that belt for so as long as he did. But, man, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough to really uh, for Uha to really turn things around here next time. But we'll find out. That right there he does it. And when you're the size that uh, the, when you're the size of Uha, he may be short, but he's very big. The whole Your whole body crashing onto your head. Take you out quickly. You gotta believe that a guy like Ethan Baker right now is a hard, he's gonna be a hard guy to stop if he really gets going. If someone can't stop this guy in a matter of a couple weeks, I do believe that he'll be damn near unstoppable. Ethan Baker is that kind of guy. He does not slow down. Once he gets going, he's a hard guy to slow down. He's a damn machine. He's a machine for a reason. Right now, holding that championship though. Holding that championship though. Hey, this guy is, like I said, the guy we gotta watch, another guy you gotta watch out for. Speaking of guys, gotta watch out for. In our main event, these three guys are gonna fucking do it. Here we go. Ao Spiros, former Pure Intense Wrestling World Champion. Ashley Everett, former Pure Intense Wrestling World and World Champion. Scott Mercury, current Pure Intense Wrestling World Champion. Take each other on in a triple threat match for the Pure Intense Wrestling World Championship. Which one of these two will come out? Uh, which one of these three will come out above in the next match in our main event? In, in, in the whole nine yards, whatever. Up next, which one of these three will come out above? We'll find out here in the main event of Pure Intense Wrestling. Yeah. This is our main event here, ladies and gentlemen. Scott Mercury, Ao Spars, and Ashley ever take each other on in a triple threat match. Go! Oh, right back into it already. Go! Oh, flat liner there. And this match just started here. We saw Scott Murky get out of that last move somehow, some way, but then got caught up with another one. Now Murky back up in control here, taking going for it. The dragon suplex beautifully done. Oh. Scott Murky throwing things at everyone here at this point. Oh, look at this. What the hell? No way. Already. And Mercury's in a lot of trouble here. The no disqualification matches is a triple threat. Expect nothing but the best. From these two, from these three. Oh, I keep saying two. Been a lot of twos tonight. And now Scott Murky do whatever the hell he wants. And he is the Pure Intense Wrestling World Champion right now. And he is doing whatever the hell he pleases. Whatever, whatever's going to help him win, that's what he's going to do. Going after Ail Spouse specifically. Oh! <coughs> Excuse me, I just sneezed. No! Shit, I couldn't, I couldn't hold it back anymore. It's fucking crazy. Oh, shit. Oh, belly to belly there by Scott. They've really, really, really been bringing it so far. Oh, my gosh, no way. Oh, went for the clothesline to push uh, Ashley Everett over. Scott Murky finds nothing but rope there. But the back of the head of A.L. Sprouts is definitely going to start feeling after that t fucking chair. That meteor onto the chair. Oh. Toss him outside there. Taking him over, and Mercury has, has, does not like either of these guys here. He has respect for them for sure, but does not like either of these guys. And now Mercury having some fun, having some fun here. Flying, oh, from the back of the net. Oh, went for something, and went for something, and went too far into it. Got caught up. Oh, and now you see Ashley Everett, Nail Sprouts taking advantage. Gets out of it quickly, but gets caught right there. Oh, gosh. These guys just do not, and they're not, they're relentless, they're relentless, they're not gonna let, oh, Scott Mercury will get away for free. And now he's beating the hell out of Scott Mercury here, and this is what these, this, these two need to do. They need to realize that Scott Mercury may be the biggest threat here in this match. Oh my gosh, go! Oh! Fucking A. And now Spiral's trying to go for a victory here, but no. Trying to get that win. This hatch suplex beautifully done. 
knocked oh it just elbows him right off oh shit mercury is in control here ladies and gentlemen this oh my gosh reverse 450 right back in the ring telling Ashley ever to suck it here I don't know if that's a good idea either way and mercury on the outside of that chair oh the back of the head and, and Scott Mercury is trying to end this quickly and now take it out Ashley Everett as well. Oh, fucking hey! And you know Scott Murphy's trying to end this thing. He doesn't want to put too much pressure on himself in this match or in any match, especially when you're holding that Pure Intense Wrestling Championship. He see the, he's seen championship champions in the past how they have to they practically have to burn themselves out in matches like especially like matches like this against high cal caliber fucking guys like a uh, Scott Merck, sorry like a uh, Ashley Everett or AO Spirals. He, he knows. He's seen it. He's also been uh, NXT champion before. He knows what it's like. He knows it's not gonna be. It's not an easy thing to do. Oh! At the same time, this guy will beat the hell out of himself to win the, to win any match he goes into. He's this, this kind of guy that Scott Mercury is. Reversal there by Ashley Ever. Ashley Ever, another guy you gotta watch out for. And now just throwing those knees right into Scott Mercury and tosses him right into that those, those steps there. Ashley Ever earning that shot. After winning the Pure Intense Wrestling Top Prospect Tournament. Oh! And ever since then, the guy's been practically on top. And when it comes to being on in um, on the card, he's usually in main events of some sort. And that's, that's the, the magic that it can bring you. Oh! This... Ashley Everett in trouble here. Got Buster there by Ale Spirals. Tossed into the corner there. Drop kick swatted away. Go! Oh! And Spirals just takes it. Spirals just takes that shot. Eats that shit practically. Super kick to the side of the head of Mercury. Ale Spirals, I can't speak enough of this guy. It's, it's been so damn good. Super kick taking him out. This guy's just so good. There's nothing else I can really say about him. He's just that damn good. And right now, Mercury wants to finish this thing here. Spirals slowly trying to get up here at this point. Mercury wants to finish. Oh, he got him with a kick. Goes right for the pin. Does not even pay attention. Not even paying attention to like, the AO Spirals. Spirals breaks it up. And a flat liner right there on that baseball bat. Spirals, I mean, uh... Scott rolling out, rolls back in. Now wants to finish to take this thing in his, on his own. Oh, get this thing back into his own here. Drop kick, taking him back down. And I mean, I mean it. Scott Murky has a, a huge hatred for AO Sparrows. And anyone who wants to get in the way of that is going to have a big time issue because Scott Murky right now will do anything to win. No! Oh! <laughs> Holy shit. Drop here right to the face. Mercury not here to play. Oh, but neither is Ashley Everett or Ale Spirals here. Oh, just cuts him off. Whatever he was doing for, get cuts, gets get cut off. Oh my gosh. Oh, that neck. Swatted away. I mean, the back and forth between these three guys is amazing right now. And as much as, as sloppy as Mercury is, he wants to get it done. He's not trying to waste time trying to figure out who's going to do what. Look at this. Oh, that slap to the, those slaps are disrespectful slaps to the face as well. Flying off those ropes for some speed and that kick right to the midsection. Oh! And again, it's got Mercury just in trouble. He's been hit by everything these guys are throwing at him here. He's the only as he is, he is uh, a human being after all. Oh, and there's only so much you can take. Ashley Everett knows this. Takes advantage of this office set opportunity here for himself. Oh. Belly to back suplex, suplex there. Oh, fucking A. So, we went for a swing, we went for a super kick, got caught there. Double knee face breaker there by Ashley Everett, Everett in control. And how how would, uh, much would it, uh, how important would it be for Everett to win this match here? How important would it be for either any three of these guys to win this match here? 
Going for something big, but no. Mercury stop coming a mile away. Spinning back kick. And AL spirals with a re neck breaker. Tries to float over. Wants to finish this thing quickly. This could be it. It kicks out at one. He tried to kick out at zero. Spirals wants to finish. Spirals wants to finish. And if Ash ever can't get up in time, this could cost him and every it could cost everything in this one. Going for something, going for that spirals. Oh, so much for the spirals clash, but no. Oh, it runs right into a knee. Oh, super kick taking him out. Actually, ever actually ever here? Look at this. Oh, pump handle drop. And now Everett, Everett has him. Everett has him where he wants him. The question is, can he hit that bang rang Can he hit that bang rang Setting up for something? No, he oh. But no way. Back and forth again. Fucking hey, this match, this match has been crazy. Close eye taking him over. Mercury has him where he wants him. But so does Ao Sparrows. Ao Sparrows also. Oh! Smash up that arm there. This is our minute here, and this is for the Puritans Wrestling World Championship. Scott Mercury defending against not only one, but two people to end this month here in Puritans Wrestling. It's been amazing here so far. Goes to the Minchinoka driver, goes to the pin as well. Breaks it up quickly to Scott Mercury. Mercury had kicked out that side of the head. Like I said, this a uh, huge hatred here. No, oh, just knocks him out with that fucking kick. Holy shit. He, I've never seen what's going on here. Two, and a kick out at two. I've never seen Scott Mercury kick, them, kick him over the rope like that. Oh, forearm shot to the face. Oh, Mercury, like I said, has him where exactly where he wants him. Is trying to get things done here. Tosses him over the rope. So Mercury, Mercury ready to go. I'm surprised Ashley Evers allowing this, but if if Ashley Evers smart, he must take his time and not rush into this thing. He lands right on him. Oh my gosh, Mercury not allowing Ariel Sprouts to rest for a moment. Tossed him right onto that table. Oh! Oh, he just pushes him into the edge of the table there. There's a huge hatred here for Scott Mercury and, and fucking Spirals. I don't know what it is, but Mercury does not like this guy at all. And right now, putting him on the table... And just when you thought Scott Mercury is done doing things that are insane, he goes to the top rope here. He's, he's ready to go, ready to go. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Tosses Everett's head into that fucking ring post there. And now wants to finish this match and easily could, easily can. Elbow right to the side of that. Also, the pin not paying attention to Everett here. Everett makes the save. Oh, he lands right on him, but misses by just a little bit. Oh! Spiral's in trouble. Ashley Everett in trouble. Scott Mercury wants to be. Hits that frog splash, but gets swat. It just, just fucking moves out the way. Does Ashley Everett. Everett picking up the much smaller Mercury here. Everett probably one of the strongest of the three. Use, uh, use his fucking size in this one. Another pump handle drop. He's got Mercury kicks him off. Oh, it hits on that Pele and out quickly. That's got Mercury roll. Right back into the ring. I don't know how he got out of that. He, he, I mean, he, he got him, but I maybe didn't hit him all the way. Drop kick, taking him down. Snap suplex, but a float over as well. Floats over as well. That form right across the face to make the to keep him down even more. Very aggressive. Can Ashley ever be? And now Ashley ever has him where he wants him. Ashley ever has him where he wants him. Sets up, sets up the area crash. He got all of it. Goes for the pin here again, referee. Whoa! 
Makes a save. Makes a save quickly. Oh, German suplex. Goes for the neck breaker. Either way, one of these two one, one of these two are gonna be in trouble here. One of these two are in trouble here. And it looks like right now it's gonna be. Looks like right now it's gonna be AO Spirals going for that, that kick. Oh, he swats it away. AO Spirals in trouble. Bang a rang, he got all of it. Oh, he knocks him down. Holy shit, what a match this has been. Tossing him off the ropes here. Ducks down nicely. Sets up, bang rang of his own. Holy shit, he got, he got all of it too. He got all of it too. Hooks the leg quickly. Referee, one, two, and makes a save. There's, uh, there's A.O. Sprouts here. Sprouts tossing him into the corner. Oh, fighting back. Punch swatted. Uppercut. Reversal there by Mercury. Oof. Pele swatted. Drop kick. Everyone's getting hit. Every, everyone in which way here? Re Oof. Exploding suplex there. Everett. Watching Mercury. Mercury ready to go. Elbow right across the back. Going for a gentleman's clutch here. Going for a gentleman's clutch. He got all of it as well. He got all of it as well. Referee. Oh, he kicks out a fucking zero there. Ashley Everett in control here right now, smashing that arm of Scott Mercury. Going for something possibly even worse than before. Going for that, going for air raid, air raid crash again, air raid siren, whatever you want to call it. Spirals was going for something on his own here. Broken up again. Does not want to have this match end the way that it is. That is that's going right now. And again, right back into it. And once again, Scott Mercury right back up. Reversal there. Reverse uh, DDT there. Close line taking down. Another one. Ducks the line. Super kick to the side of the face. Reversing out of that quickly. Oh, he got him. Oh, he tossed him down. Ashley Everett could win this match here. Ashley Everett could win this match here. Ladies and gentlemen, this could be it. This could be it. He got him. Bang a rang. He got him. Bang a rang. He got all of it. Holy shit. Wasting no time here. Ladies and gentlemen, won. And again, being broken up there by spirals. How crazy has this match been? This, scratch, this match has been insane. Oh. Half and half there. Oh no, not even a half and a half. Holy shit. What is this match right now? Ladies and gentlemen, I, I don't even know what to say about this. This has been insane. This has been insane. Topia Tomiko right across the chest. Sets up for something. Nice. I think it's a roll up here. Victory roll. Victory roll here by Ashley Everett. This could be it right here. Referee one. Two. Three, and he got it. Ashley Everett is the new world champion. The Pure Test Wrestling World Champion. Holy shit. A victory roll that took Scott Mercury off his game. Not often can you say that. A match for the fucking year. This triple threat was something. This triple threat was something. A lot of reversals from all these guys. Like I said, they know each other so well. And you expect Mercury to kind of walk away with this whole thing here. I mean, he had most of this match in the bag. In the bag here. But Ashley ever out of nowhere with a big time victory. Well, not even with a finisher, but a roll up there. And a roll up is always taking people off their game. Right there. This is early on in the match. Uh, fucking how many and then how many times did fucking AO spirals fucking get get up break breakups there? Holy shit, that reversal by Ashley was amazing. You don't expect it, but when he gets you with it, he gets you with it. That bang or rang was the the start of something big. It was the start of a momentum change here within this whole match. Again, making the save. Right here, watch this Tope Tope Atomico right across the chest, keeping AO spirals down just for a little bit longer here. Mercury trying to ruck and get a little speed off that right there. Got caught up. Got caught up in that, that momentum, that speed, and everything. Took Mercury off his game. And all the and as tired as he was and as strong as Ashley Everett was as well, he got the victory. We have a new 
Pure Intense Wrestling World Champion, a two-time Pure Intense Wrestling World Champion here, we mean Ashley Everett. You don't expect it, but this is what you get. This is what you get. Ladies and gentlemen, this is proof that Pure Intense Wrestling is the best wrestling on the planet. This is Pure Intense Wrestling. And as always, guys, comment, like, subscribe if you haven't already. I know this was a long night, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was fucking crazy back and forth action. I loved every minute of this whole night here. Um, with that all being said and done, like I said before, comment, like, subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys at Crash Japan Pro Wrestling. Crash Japan Pro Wrestling later on this week will also be having their um, pay-per-view simply known as, as the Cell Game. So you'll see a lot of Hell in a Cell matches, a lot of cage-style matches. It's going to be out of control. Can't wait for all that, but we still have to get through this week here to get to that point. So up next is Crash Japan Pro Wrestling. So anyways, like I said before, one more time, comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. If you're new to this channel, that helps me out so much. And you should know that already if you subscribe to someone else's channel. It helps me out so much. And with that, I will see you guys at Crash Japan Pro Wrestling. Until then, peace out and good shit.